for our next guest. I haven't seen this gentleman for probably over 40 years. We grew up in the same neighborhood in uh, the west side of St. Catharines. And as he was a few years older than me, a friend of my brother's, I always knew that there was some history about Dennis Dawson's father, known by everybody in St. Catharines as Pudge, having served in World War II. Dennis Dawson, welcome to the studio. Thanks, Mike. Good to see you. I always looked up to you and your father, and, and your father, I remember every year in the St. Catherine Standard, yep. after he passed away, that wonderful photograph of him in uniform. Can you talk to us today about his time in the service? Certainly, you know, I've heard lots of stories and things over the years and been present at reunions and whatnot where uh, uh, they'd get together and talk. But uh, he, my dad lived in Toronto, born in Toronto, uh, 1918, September 9th, 1918, and moved to St. Catharines, say 1938, right around there. At what point did he enlist? He enlisted in 1940. Uh, so him and a, a group of the other guys went down and, and they enlisted in uh, um, a Brantford, I believe they went to enlist in Brantford, either that or somewhere in Dundas, like they had set up at the armories and so on. They took off and went down and signed up then. Uh, 1940, right then they enlisted. And he always said that, you know, it was a great idea. They were in the il artillery. So if you're in the artillery, you've got this big gun that you've got to drag around, so you need a truck. So you're not doing much walking if you're in the artillery. Right. So they uh, uh, really appreciated that. Uh, they were stationed down here at Niagara-on-the-Lake. On they trained down at Niagara-on-the-Lake. They went off to uh, Halifax. They went off to Newfoundland and practiced and trained and shot their guns and did all the things that the Army guys do before they went overseas. Uh, he came back on a leave uh, from down east. In 1942, married my mom here in St. Catharines. I and love then, the story that he <laughs> brought the marriage certificate back and had all the guys. Yeah, well, I, I think a lot it. of the guys were there too at the time, like at the armories and stuff. Like I say, they were on leave. I don't know 100% sure if they signed it there. There was lots of things going on. People were really bustling and moving around and doing stuff and getting ready to, uh, to go overseas. So uh, there was quite a few people there. So he may have taken it back and then brought it back again or sent it back or however it went. Um, so it, it, it was a pretty interesting time for them, I'm sure. He was with a crew of four, well, three and him, and they right. called themselves the Dauntless Four. The Dauntless Four. And how did they get that nickname? If we talk to uh, Kathy over at the museum, she has a copy of a poem that one of the guys of the Dauntless Four, I don't know which one, I'm not sure, I think it was probably Ken Boudreaux. A relative of his was in Halifax, I believe, and she had named them the Dauntless Four, and she had made a poem about them right. going out together and looking out for each other and going downtown and all the rest of it. So they were together on the gun crew, and they went uh, through the whole entire war together and came home together, all four of them. So they were pretty dauntless, I'd have to say. What did your dad share with you about the experience of being a black man serving Canada during the Second World War? The guys didn't talk much about the war. They had their accomplishments, they knew what they did, they did their job and they went over there and they, they took care of things the way they needed to. Came back and then uh, uh, they didn't talk about stuff much and if they did, they talked about funny things. My dad never really talked about discrimination in the service but I'm sure there was discrimination in the service. And uh, if anything, I've got more information from other guys, Dauntless Four members, about the discrimination. One thing I can share is they were in the barracks one night. Some guy said something smart to my old man, just like on the movies, the, the, the lights went out. And the next thing, everybody was there. When the lights came on, my dad had the guy pinned in the corner with a piece of the bed rail across his throat <laughs> going, uh, I, I'm a better black man than you are a white man. And, <laughs> So they took care of their problems sort of their own way, but uh, in his leadership role, I don't think that he experienced too much. I mean, he wasn't the kind of guy that, he wasn't loud. I never ever heard him uh, uh, talk to anybody in anger, raise his voice in anger, which for my entire life, I never heard him. He never yelled at me, he never yelled at my, my parents. He was always known uh, around town to be a, a very even-keeled He was mild, mild-mannered, but he, he still, he had that presence sergeant at arms and stuff like this. It's like he was uh, on top of the situation. He knew how to deal with people and how to get the best out of people and that's probably why they promoted him through the army. Dennis, thanks so much for joining us today. It's great you're, to see you after all this time. You're welcome, Mike, nice to see you.